Hello everybody, greetings from Silicon Valley and guess who I'm with today? I'm with Chris Ye, uh, the co-author of this amazing book, if some of you remember, uh, Blitzscaling uh, and uh, co-founder of the Blitzscaling Fund, right? Yes, uh, Blitzscaling fund. Ventures, we Ventures. have a couple of different funds. That's right, so now um, just to get everybody up to speed, Blitzscaling as a concept, uh, what was it originally? The idea behind Blitzscaling is that when we have a valuable winner-take-most market, the best strategy is to prioritize speed over efficiency to win that market. So we see, for example, the way that Uber was able to win the market for ride-hailing in this country and around the world, or the way that a company like Airbnb was able to become the dominant player in hosting people in your homes. These are examples of Blitzscaling, and we see it happening even today with companies like OpenAI. So the thing is that that book, uh, this book, uh, was written in 2018. What I thought was like at the tail end of the platform era and the companies that you mentioned, the whole, the game plan was really to uh, onboard as many customers as possible and then monetize them. And that's what ven venture capitalists were looking out for. Uh, and the, the idea was to be quick and, and, and scale quickly. Uh, and we are now having this conversation on how that's applied to the AI realm. So just bring us up to speed, blitz scaling in AI, what should we be looking for? Absolutely, so blitz scaling does fundamentally transform AI and vice versa. So the way to think about the AI industry is it is still going to be a blitz scaling industry because there are going to be winner take most markets in AI, perhaps even more so because of the fact that the learning effect around AI is going to reinforce the winners. But it's important for blitzscaling companies not to just solely rely on a technology moat. Because after all, new technologies are coming out all the time. They're still gonna need to do the traditional business building, the traditional creation of network effects and lock-in that has enabled blitzscalers of the past. On the other hand, one of the things that often holds back people from scaling more quickly are the costs, the difficulty in hiring enough talent, uh, being able to fund the growth. And with AI, AI will allow your people to be so much more productive that you'll be able to scale up with less capital, with less people. And so people who adopt blitz scaling and AI together are going to be even more successful. Um, what Something that you did to the AI ecosystem was to sort of classify them into foundation players, into application layer, uh, all of that. Can you give us a sense of you know, how you um, sort of pigeonhole uh, the different AI players that are coming on stream, um, you know, and how they're different from each other and what value you put on them and which ones are more, you know, susceptible to blitz, blitz scaling uh, than others. Absolutely. So what you're talking about is the AI technology stack, which has been defined by one of my other partners at Blitz Scaling Ventures, Jeremiah Aoyang. We begin at the bottom with the data layer. And with data, you have, if if you have proprietary data, if you have the ability to generate data that is really useful, that becomes a powerful quiver, a powerful arrow in your quiver. And so people at the data layer are going to be very successful because AI companies are going to need that data in order to train new models, in order to be more and more effective. Above that layer is the infrastructure layer. So think about a company like NVIDIA, which is now one of the most valuable companies in the world. That's because its chips are fundamental to AI infrastructure. And there'll be other infrastructure plays that resemble the classic picks and shovels companies like a Cisco Systems or an Intel from previous generations. Sitting above that is the layer of the foundational models, the open AIs, the, the Llama 2s and the like. And these are also going to have blitz scaling characteristics because when you achieve scale with these and you are able to then get more and more users coming in, that user data allows you to improve them faster than the competition can. And then finally, at the top layer, seeing above all of this, we have the AI applications, which is where most of the companies being started are. It's very hard to build a fundamental platform. It's a little easier to build an application on top of it. So most companies are going to be application companies. And then also autonomous agents, an emerging space that people like Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, are saying are going to be the future of AI. So these are all some of the different areas within AI. They have different characteristics, but there's going to be big winners in each. The winners at the foundational model layer are largely already decided. Sima, same with some elements of the infrastructure. Like, it's gonna be difficult to displace NVIDIA, but many of these places are still up for grabs. Now, you, you started a fund, or you're starting a fund, looking at some of these players. 
So there will be like thousands of uh, players at the application layer. Yeah. And you just said that, you know, the foundation layer, may, the winners are probably clear right now. Uh, and and uh, Mark Mayhoff uh, layer, what was it again? Mark Benioff ben of Benioff. Salesforce talked about how autonomous agents are going to be the next wave of AI. Autonomous agents yeah. means, uh, you know, are these plug-ons? Well, yeah, so think about it. If you have something like ChatGPT, you ask it a question, it gives you an answer. But with an autonomous agent, you just give it some basic instructions, it goes and acts on its own. So let's say you want to use ChatGPT to book an airline flight. You have a whole bunch of queries, hey, which airlines fly there, what's the best itinerary, and eventually you maybe go ahead and you enter it into a website yourself. With an autonomous agent, you just say, Get me the best flight from San Francisco to Boston. It'll go out and do it on its own. Okay. Uh, and your fund, how is it going to be invested? Uh, how big is it going to be? Um, you know, and, and, and who's going to be invested in it? Yeah, so our fund is going to be investing in seed and Series A companies in the AI space. And so we're going to be looking for companies that we think are tackling these valuable winner-take-most markets that are building in network effects so that they can win their winner-take-most markets. And, you know, in terms of investors, the kinds of people we raise money from are probably the general people who invest in venture funds. So wealthy individuals, family offices, people who have already been successful but believe that AI is going to be a big wave and they want to be a part of it. So I like the way you've classified AI uh, or the AI players coming on stream because here in the, in the Valley, there's a whole lot of them, right? Yeah. So uh, to be able to, um, you know, uh, separate the chef from the, from the grain is... Uh, it's quite a bit of uh, thinking there, um, and and you've updated um, this training into the AI realm. So you know, congratulations on that. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Such a pleasure to be here with you, and glad that we can have yet another only in Silicon Valley interaction like this. Thank you.